I was brought up between Anderson and Govan, so I lived in Govan. Ended up working in the shipyards and I started in Fairfields, as I know it, which is now Govan. I started in there in 1973. Still a romantic attachment to the, the Clyde built Clyde ships, but, but basically that's all disappeared years ago. At one time there was 100,000 people employed in the shipyards in Glasgow, I'm going back a long, long time ago. But, but even as, to the 60s, there was 5,000 in Fairfields, 5,000 in Browns, and adding them all up, there was thousands and thousands of men. But that's not the case anymore. There's only two yards left in the Upper Clyde, but Yarrows and Fairfields, which is now BAA system, Scotson Yard and Govan Yard. They're dismantling the crans in Fairfields and they're saying it's because they're, they're no longer uh, fit for use. And to be truthful, they haven't used them for a few years because they've not been building any boats on the slipway. For what I hear, they bought two big, huge mobile crans. Technology's moved on. If they don't need the cranes, but they're, they're turning into an eyesore, they're rusting away. I think Govan is a district in its own. There's a lot of wee shops and restaurants and that run about that make a living out of the yard. But I would say the population of Govan now, much reduced as it is for 40 years ago when it was all tenement buildings. There's very few people for Govan actually working in the industry now. I know a few guys for Govan still work in the yard, but most of them don't live in Govan anymore. Because Govan's been flattened. Well, I would like to see it still there for the sake of the young fellas that have young families and mortgages and I was, of course it's a source of employment so any source of employment in these days I, I, was, I would hope it would still be there but that's in the lap of the gods and God knows what's going to happen with this referendum next year a British government won't place MOD orders in a, what is a more or less a foreign country which, which it will be if if the referendum votes yes Well, the cranes were everybody's idea of Glasgow and the Clyde. Uh, Kenneth McGellar singing the song of the Clyde, you know, the hammer's ding-dong is the song of the Clyde. Up and down the river in the welding arcs and, and the the burners, sparks come cascading out the side of the ship. That well, was all beautiful stuff, beautiful theatre when you sailed down the river. So there's a myriad of, uh, of cranes. So the River Clyde without cranes uh, is, is, is a bit alien. So it's a great loss to the skyline and to the skyline of Govan because uh, you'd see them, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're north of the river or from the south, you'd see the cranes towering over the, the yards. I, I don't see independence having a, a, any real uh, effect on warship building on the Clyde. Scotland would have to have a defence force of its own if they did go to independence. BEA Systems is a massive company. Uh, they're not putting investment into Scotson just to shut up shop in case the MOD don't buy a ship off them. But I can't see them using Govan again. Once the, the second of the Queen Elizabeth carriers sections have been finished and moved over to Rosyth, then I think they'll they'll shut Govan. 
I don't know what the answer is for Govan. It has to get some industry to, to lift it. There is no heavy industry left in Britain, never mind Govan. Although Govan's been there a long, long time. When the Vikings left, I don't think that was the end of Govan. It's, we've carried on through the days of wooden ships, steel ships. Glasgow, of course, is the, has been a, a, a world centre of shipbuilding and uh, of the Glasgow yards, Fairfield and Govan was really the, the, the jewel in the crown. We hear all the time that, that shipbuilding is, is part of Glasgow's past. Why should we care about it? Uh, shipbuilding is part of Glasgow now. Name another industry uh, where, until recently, uh, there were 4,000 people working between Govan and Scotson. It's all very well to say, well, at one time, you know, there was there was an awful lot more than that. There was 10,000 in Govan alone, but that applies to every industry in the world. But shipbuilding is still a very, very significant industry here. It's uh, really been quite sad to see the, the cranes go. It no longer looks like a shipyard to some extent because the cranes were the, the iconic symbol of what was happening beneath them. And, and, and without wanting to romanticise too much, they were a symbol of Govan's maritime heritage. They're, they're a symbol of, of Glasgow's heritage. It's sad that there wasn't the possibility of at least r retaining one as a, a, a as a reminder of that fantastic past. I think it's so ironic, to be honest, that just at the time the cranes were coming down, the papers were full of the new the new kelpies being uh, being erected and opened, and these huge structures. I think they stretched up to about 100 feet into the sky, with hundreds of tons of steel representing. Uh, the the industrial heritage you know of the of of the horses that were used uh, in in those times, and it just seemed to me so ironical that as that money was being spent putting this up, we were actually demolishing uh, some of the most famous structures in in the country, uh, and we seem to lack vision in Glasgow, I'm afraid. I do think if people understood the significance of heritage uh, in Govan terms and in Glasgow terms, then something would have been done to retain, move for example and re-erect, but to retain uh, just that reminder of what has been uh, one of the most, the greatest industrial stories in, in the world really in terms of what happened here uh, over the last 150 years.